My name is Ken Colbert. Um, I've been involved in motorsport for a very long time. Started in motorsport in 1972. That's 50 years ago. I enjoy motorsport. Thoroughly enjoy it. Both as an engineer, as a competitor. And I've spectated on it as well. I'm not a very good spectator because I always think I could do that better when I'm watching. But it's been my life and I made a business from it. The history of the Metro, they were made, 200 minimum build was required for homologation to compete at World Championship level. British Leyland were the last people to become involved in that series. Audi Quattros were there, four-wheel drive. Peugeot T T16s were there, four-wheel drive. Those cars were all out before the, the Metro was invented. And BL thought, we need to be involved in this somewhere. And they contacted Williams Motorsport, F1. Patrick Head was asked to design a four-wheel drive car that would be competitive at world level. And as they talk about, Patrick drew it out on the back of a matchbox. They made it three litre, not turbocharged like all the other models were, normally aspirated. Um, that hit the road running 85. Unfortunately, there was never a ceiling on horsepower, so some of the quicker ones had five, six hundred horsepower. They were just getting too dangerous, too fast. Spectators were hard to keep in place and under control. And unfortunately, Henry Teuvenen was a fatality in that series in Corsica. And immediately, the series was banned. So all of the manufacturers with the cars were left with a compound 200 cars and nowhere to use them. So they were sold off to anybody who could afford to buy one. Anybody who bought one could then build it and use it at national level. But at that point, they lowered the engine size from three liter to 2.8 to make it a more usable, safer car. Progress cannot be stopped. So in later years, uh, Goodman engine builders decided we can build as quick a car as the 3 litre ones, we'll take it back to 2.5. And they applied to the authorities, could we do that? And they gave permission to do that. So it was taken back from 2.8 to 2.5, and those were highly tuned engines, which now produced exactly what the 3 litre ones had produced earlier. So the cars became very much sought after again. The performance is, is unbelievable. At 11,000 RPM, with a knot to 60 time of around three seconds. It's, it's a mighty car. Not any quicker than your modern cars nowadays. The WRCs of nowadays are quicker again, but for an old normally aspirated car, it's a car you've got to be on top of. It's rear engined, it's four wheel drive, and everything is right behind your head. All six cylinders, and it is loud. A great thrill to drive that through a stage. But you've got to be on top of it. You've got to be the driver. It can be driven sideways all day long, but the heavy end is behind. It will soon get to the front. And you're spun and you're off the road. There's a technique in driving, but very rewarding to get it right. Setting it up for corners, you listen to the pace notes beside you from your co-driver, so you now have got it. You're in your head what's coming up, and you're in the gear. You've selected to deal with that particular obstacle. And if you're not switched on, or your mind wanders, and you go into the wrong gear, too low, too high, brake too late, you're off, so you're fully focused. It's a concentration job. It, you've got to be on it all the time. It appealed to everybody, because the first thing in motorsport is the sound. The turbo cars didn't have that. To be honest, when I was using those cars, competing against, Escort Cosworths, Subarus, Toyota Corollas. My car always stood out. If you watch a video of my car, you'll hear my car above everything else because of that high RPM. That V6 sound.
It's an orchestra. It's a keeper. And it will probably stay in this family as well. I think the thing I love most about motorsport is the speed and the adrenaline that you can have whilst driving it. I'm mostly getting out of school early just to do Wednesday night testing. <laughs> Ever since the start, I thought I wanted to be in Formula One. That's the place where I want to be. It would be fantastic to get there, but I, I do see the journey it takes to get there. And, um, and explaining that to an 11-year-old is just a no, non-starter at the moment. So he keeps his dream, keep aiming high, and I think it's fantastic to shoot for Formula One, but at the end of the day, if he doesn't make it that far, I've made a career from motorsport by getting the chance to come kart racing. So. It's, it's trying to give him the same opportunity, really. But yes, aim for Formula One, but we've had the financial chat, which he's kind of not listened to, so. Mm. I guess coming from motorsport and having that background and, and having that engineering background, for me, there's, a, there's always a it's a pressure I put on my side, which sometimes will spill over onto Max a little bit, because you can see the little area and you know where you can go a little bit faster. And as he said, it's all about lap time, and it is all about lap time for us, so if we can keep improving every day. For me, it's fantastic, but it comes to a point where I have to maybe hold myself back a little bit. <laughs> Being the link in the middle, obviously, between the younger generation and the older generation, I was very lucky, because I grew up with my dad obviously teaching me and passing down all of that knowledge and, and information. Um, that's kind of came full circle because being able to work in Europe with some very good race teams, I have obviously picked up a lot of knowledge over the years which I was able to then filter back. So when we do our sprints or, or events at home and sharing the car with Dad, it's almost like being able to then put some information back into him and teach him a little bit. It makes me feel very lucky that I am in a racing household because if I wasn't, I could be, I don't know where I would be. I wouldn't be sitting at a racetrack, I know that. Sometimes when I'm laying in bed just trying to get to sleep, I'm thinking if there was a way to improve that corner, would I have done it if I could have during the day? So yeah, it is kind of just going round and round in your head during the day and when you're not doing it. It keeps you awake as well as me then. <laughs> Perfect. Job done then. Uh-huh. <laughs>